Good morning, Mount Olive. I hope you're having a great Tuesday morning. Uh, let's go before Lord in prayer this morning. Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for allowing us to put our feet on the ground, Father. Lord, thank you for giving us help. Lord, there are so many that we hear about, Father, that are sick. Lord, we have so many friends who have lost loved ones during this time. Lord, we want to thank you for watching over us. But, Father, we also want to lift them up in prayer, Father, that you will touch each and every situation and heal those that are sick, Father. Lord, that you'll bring comfort and peace to those who have lost individuals, family members, Father, to this disease. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you'll bring healing to our nation. Lord, that you'll bring peace. Lord, that only you can bring. Lord, that we as your church will humble ourselves and, and come before you and ask for your forgiveness. Lord, please go with us today. Be God and direct every decision. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Let's go ahead and share our screen this morning. And we are, uh, as uh, uh, Brother Jody and Brother TJ did, uh, we're doing a lesson on uh, on 2 Corinthians. Um, 2 Corinthians being the second letter uh, that Paul had given uh, to the church there in Corinth. And um, uh, was, was really a very good uh, second book because the first one was one of, uh, I guess, uh, to, 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 to really kind of bring the church back into uh, an understanding they were going through a lot of things. It was to have them come back to the Lord or to kind of discipline them in, in a way of how a church should be ran. So there was a lot of tension in between the church and Paul uh, after the first letter. In the second letter, he had received some good news from Titus that said that the first letter he had written had had the desired effect, that uh, they had done a lot of good things since then, and Paul was was very uh, glad to hear that and really kind of relieved. And in, in the first few chapters of, of 2 Corinthians is basically doing that, is basically saying all the things uh, to make sure that their relationship between uh, himself and the church uh, was back in good favor. So uh, he did have the intended purpose. Uh, it did help the church. It had them uh, come back to Christ um, as he would have it to be done in his church. And Paul uses this letter to ba basically patch up hurt feelings and really to encourage them to continue on. But in the verses that I'd like to bring out in 2 Corinthians, um, I really kind of want to make this comparison. Now, uh, of course, this is the American flag, and over it we have the words uh, to the Star Spangled Banner. Um, you know, we, we stand up, we um, say allegiance, uh, our pledge allegiance to the flag. We uh, say these words, and we feel when we do that a particular pride. Uh, we feel that um, something deeper than just a song and words. We feel that um, we are so proud of this country, what it stands for, what our ancestors have fought for. Uh, we believe, uh, and rightly so, that this is the greatest country uh, on planet Earth. And we feel that because we are Americans. We are a part of the American experience, and we know the sacrifices that our ancestors have made to get here. But if we all sit down and sang the uh, national anthem to the Republic of Congo, I'm not for sure if I would have the same feeling about the Republic of Congo. And basically I could tell you I wouldn't. Uh, why? Because I'm not a part of Congo. I'm not a part of what it took to make a nation there. And I would have definitely different feelings about that. And you know, that's a very crude uh, example, but that's kind of what Paul is saying in chapter three of 2 Corinthians. And we'll kind of read this and we'll kind of put these two thoughts together. So in, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter three, verse 12, it says, seeing then that we have such hope, we use uh, a great uh, plainness of speech uh, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of which was abolished, but their minds were blinded for until this day remain at the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. 
that even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Basically, what Paul's saying here is back in the Old Testament, when uh, Moses had to wear a veil over his face, he had to do it in such a way that uh, it, it would not uh, offend the children of Israel because his, his face uh, glowed. Uh, there was a holiness about it. And basically what he's saying here is that uh, at this time, the Jews and then uh, not, uh, those that aren't Christians are basically behind a veil. That basically they can't see the glory of God because of the veil, and they don't understand it. Um, just as we don't feel the same way upon hearing the, uh, the national anthem of the Congo, you, uh, if, if a person is not a Christian, then they don't feel or they don't see the beauty uh, when that veil is taken away. And it can only be done when you accept Christ as your Savior. You know, it, the Bible is the only book that you really have to know the author to really understand all it's saying. Uh, lots of different people have read it, don't understand what it's saying. But when you have accepted Christ as your Savior, it speaks to your heart. You don't see through that veil. It's not blocked uh, as Moses' face was. Uh, is your veil still in place this morning? Uh, only by having accepted Christ as your Savior can one see the beauty and security that Jesus Christ provides. Accept him, and he'll remove that veil so you can see clearer. Paul was saying in 2 Corinthians that those who who were still believing in the Old Testament have a veil they couldn't see the beauty of Christ. And only in acceptance of Jesus Christ is that made uh, clear without the veil. Is your veil still there? Let's hope that it's not. Hope you have a great day, and we'll see you in church soon.